The uh, Zeus. You have eaten at Zeus? Yeah. The uh, one of the guys. Okay, the, the gentleman who owns it, one of his uh, nephews, Kareem, is a very good fi- uh, friend of mine. Uh, the, to take the place of military and being a cop, I go and fight at a particular gym, and he's one of the guys I have to fight. And he's a very, very good fighter, extremely good fighter. So anyway, it, it was so funny is that Fuchsia Pickett, I'm six, I'll be 65, I have to fight. I just enjoy, I enjoy boxing. Okay, I just like it. <clears throat> They're all nice guys, and they really are, but the, the people that uh, – in the octagon in the in the UFC, well, that's the guys who I spar with, the local talent here, and uh, I was uh, going to wrestle some of them, and uh, there's a particular technique that you do when you wrestle, and you put your hands on the on the guy's ribs, and you press down. When 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 you press down, it went pop pop pop. I broke three ribs. I said, okay, it's like fuchsia. I said, okay. So it took me six weeks to get over that. And then I had another uh, match to fight, and then uh, same guy, pop, 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 right there, same thing. So I said, I'm giving up wrestling. I'll get tired of it because it's, it's, it, it, it hurts. I just do the, do the, the other things. Um, we're going to do a lot of Greek. One guy's happy, the other guys are not, but I'm going to make it easy. We'll be, we're, when, we, when we talk about our father, we're going to talk about love. It's, we were in there, and he was preaching my message. You were talking about my message. So uh, I know it's right on. I heard, I heard from the Lord. There's two words for father in the Greek. The one that we know is Abba, right? And that's God our Father. The other word is pater. Forgive my handwriting, but that's my, my uh, mama always said I had the crummiest handwriting, so I should have been a doctor, so I became a doctor just to, <laughs> just to help my mama. Okay, the word pater means a father who is there sometimes he'll provide what you want but he's not interested in doing a lot of other time uh, other things he's not interested in spending time with you like my dad you know my dr annette's dad you know wasn't interested. he had uh, they had other things to do well that is also a name for the devil satan okay he wants to get you in trouble and then leave you alone and let you create your own trouble then you have the word Abba, which, of course, is God our Father. That means there he's interested in every single thing that you do. I don't care if you need a parking space. He's interested in that. He's interested in all of your nature. He's interested in your personality. He's interested in, in your whole entire life. That's Abba, our Father. He will always be with us. Isn't that great? Well, what is the name, another name for God? Okay, but another name. What, what, was his, what is his personality? I ask a lot of questions. We're just going to start off and we're going to have fun. Where did I put the thing in? Right here. Okay. But what is his personality? Okay. Two words for love. Agape. A-P-A. And agapeo. If you can't read it, tough luck. (laughs) Agape and agapeo. What I did is I just went through everywhere the New Testament said agape and where it said agapeo. Because I wanted to get a definition of it. Because I've heard a lot of definitions, but I'm a teacher, so I like to get to the root meaning of the word. And then I build from that. The word agapeo is simply means th- it simply means this. It's a father son father daughter relationship. He's our Abba. He's our daddy. Lots of times when I'm praying, I say, "Hey, Dad, how you doing?" So it's having a father son father daughter relationship. And when you have a fa- when you hang around your dad, you become like your dad. And that's what Abba wants us to do: hang around him. Well, then how do we hang around him? Hmm. Read the word. Pray, study, and meditate. That's how we hang around Dad. Okay? Well, then, out of that nature that we're forming with him, that character that we're forming with him, comes agape. Actually, in the Greek, it's agape. That's how you pronounce it in the Greek. And overall definition of agape is him moving in you and through you to help other people. Okay? It says that God is love. God is agape. 
our dad didn't put us on the planet so that we could get pats on our back and, and, and uh, sign large book deals and stuff like this. He put us on earth because he wanted to live on earth, and he decided he was going to do it through man. <laughs> so that's why we should be God inside minded. Ooh. Okay, then is he going to watch the TV shows that I watch? I don't think Dad would, would want to do that. <laughs> would he have road rage? I don't think that. <laughs> I was good at road rage. I was, I was great. I, all the people that, that, that tailgate you? Oh. Yeah, it, it hacks me off, <laughs> too. Okay? I would wait until I could see them drinking a soda pop or something, and I'd wait until they got it up here, and I'd slam my brakes on. Anyway. <laughs> and I had fun doing that a long time ago. And I had to finally say, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm a Christian, and I'm not supposed to do this. Okay? So if you're reading the Word, and you have a Greek dictionary by yourself, and something says agape in a, in a, in a verse, it simply means I want a father, fa father, son, father, daughter relationship with you. And out of, out of that, I'm going to use you to help other people. And hopefully if we get to it, we might not. We're going to find out why God says we have 120 years to live. And I can prove that, but I'm not going to go there. But why, we, why he said I want 120 years. Why didn't he say 125 years? You can find that in Matthew chapter 24 and also in Genesis chapter 6 on it. Okay. Our Father is love. He is interested in you, but he set up several principles and laws that if you want to be blessed, you have to go by his principles and laws. He's not going to decide to change his mind. We have to change our mind. Well, how do we change our mind to where it lasts? We have to conform ourselves to the image of Jesus because we have been predestined to conform ourselves to the image of Jesus. Therefore, we have been preconditioned to conform ourselves to the character of Jesus. Right. So God wants us to act like Jesus. We're, I'm going to start hitting some knees here and start buckling you down. OK. And the reason it is is because uh, if we get to it, uh, one of the keys of agape is healing. One of the blessings when you receive the word of God, you also have to receive the blessing that is tied to that word. Paradek amahi is, is the Greek word there. Pop. Let me, in fact, let me write it and I'll show you. What are you doing, Doug? I'm, I'm watching this. You watching that? Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't like people behind my back and you're always behind my back. So I was wondering. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding you. P A R A E uh, C H O M O uh, Am Ahi. A I. The word power right here means to come alongside. In other words, when he gives you a word of, of, of wisdom, word of knowledge, he gives you revelation knowledge, what he wants to do is the Holy Spirit's going to come alongside of you to get you to receive it. Now, receive again this, this doesn't mean to receive. It means receive. Listen, there's a, when you receive this, there's a prize waiting for you also if you receive it. Receive what? As part of your inheritance. See, it's part of our inheritance that we be healed. That's part of our inheritance. When my dad died, I had an inheritance. I had to split it with my, with my, with my brother. But it was mine. That was my blessing. I had an inheritance. It was mine. The bank didn't like it too much because they didn't want to give it up. But we had, a, we had, a, we had a, a hassle getting it from the bank. But anyway, it was mine. So healing is part of my blessing because it is my inheritance. Now, when you get that, you are doing what is called lambano. L-A-M-B-A-N-O. You are going to keep it when the devil tries to steal it from you. You're going to keep it. Now, you throw a little kata in front of it, K-A-T-A. -A, that's an intense holding on to your inheritance. That's where you have faith. That's where you have long-lasting faith. That's where the devil's not going to be able to come in and mess with your blessing. Well, listen, <clears throat> when you tithe, part of, the tithe, part of the blessing on the tithe is that men will give back into your bosom. 
Now, if you do the study in the Greek about the men giving back into your bosom, what he's talking about there is actually they're going to give in to you because love is on the scene, causing him or influencing them to give you money. It doesn't mean there in that scripture, I'm going to, if you, if you, if, if I'm going to give you money, it means I'm going to give you love back. You okay? Grabbing You're grabbing that, okay. <laughs> there you go. In the meetings that I teach also, if, raise your hands if you want to ask a question, if you want to stop, make a comment, or whatever. The only thing, if you do that, I really don't want to know your life history. Just ask a little short. <laughs> I just want to, really, it, it, yeah, I know. Just ask a little question, something like that. And keep on the subject of love. Don't ask me where did God come from and was he married and stuff like that, okay? This, we'll just stick with, with the scripture. Okay, now this is a principle. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start having fun, Doc. Let's go, let's go. Okay. I love this eraser. I have never seen an eraser like this. That is an eraser. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to put on some glasses, but let me say this. My vision has gotten remarkably better. Okay? Because part of my inheritance is to have the same sight, eyesight as Jesus did. Amen. Since he paid for it, I got the same sight. Okay? You see, now you have to receive it as your inheritance. Our big brother had perfect eyesight. I don't believe J.C. had glasses <laughs> or cataracts or anything like that. Okay? But it's, it has become remarkable. Anyway, it says this, verse 13, verse 1, it says, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto them, so that he went into a ship and he sat. And the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things to them. Now, we're going to skip down to, to, to uh, verse 10. After he was through, the disciples came unto him and said, Why speakest thou them in parables? In other words, he said this. What in the world did you just say? We don't understand this parable. They don't understand this parable. Why in the heck are you speaking parables? Why don't you just speak some plain talk? And Jesus said this interesting thing. He said, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them who are sitting outside, it's not. I think he personally went, he went back into his house. And this is, what, this is what love does. He'll give you revelation knowledge, and then he'll go back and sit in his house, and he'll wait for you to come and knock on the door and ask him more. What is this? He loves that. And he says, if you do that, you spend the time in prayer, study, and meditation, you come back. Because there's some days he gives me revelation. It takes me three days to find out what he's talking about. But then I always find out about it. it uh, the only people who came back in were the people who were interested in understanding and putting to use what he had just said. Now, get this. This is a principle love our Father decided to make. That is this. There's three kinds of hearers in the Word. The first one is the Akubo, A-K-A-U-O. The first one, A-K-R-O-T-A-S. And the third one is the, Noth I think it's Nothros. Let me, let me look something up here. Yeah, Nothros. It's Nothros. The first one, Akubo, is someone, I spelled it wrong. I know it doesn't make any difference to y'all, but it does to me. <laughs> y'all wouldn't know if I spelled it wrong or not. <laughs> Accuo. That's Greek to you. <clears throat> There's three types of hearers that God says there is. Now, what does the hearer mean? Hear, hear, to hear something doesn't mean to hear with your ears, although you do hear with your ears. It means hear with your heart. Yes. So there's three types. The first one is acubo. That is someone who is going into a meeting to get something out of it, and when the Holy Spirit reveals it to him, he's going to put it to, you, it to use in their life now. 
Not tomorrow, not the next day, but now. That's the one that you read. It gets the 30, 60, 100-fold principle in their life. That's the return in their life. Okay? The other one is a krotos. Simply means this. You sit here in the audience and you listen and you go, yeah, man, I'm going to put it to use in my life. But when you get outside and the pressures of life hit you, you go back trying to solve the same problems the way you normally do. And you're not going to put it to use in your life. Then you have the nothros. And this is the funny one. <clears throat> No thrall simply means this. A, someone who is, refuses to grow up. Yeah. Go? In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, this is a gas poured paraphrase. I always call it a gas poured paraphrase. I took the Greek and just made English out of it. He said, listen, the story which has been laid upon me to tell you about this matter is a long story. Difficult to tell and difficult to grasp for your ears have become dull. No thrall. For indeed, at a stage when you ought to be teachers because of the length of time that has passed since you first heard the gospel, you still need someone to tell you the simple elements of the very beginning of the message of God. You have sunk into a state when you need milk and not solid food. For when anyone is at the stage of participating in milk feeding, he does not really know what Christian righteousness is. For he is only a child from the age of zero to two. And I'm fixing to talk about children in just a second. So what does is, what is a child from zero to two normally do? He poops and he eats. <laughs> and cries. That's all he does. His complaint is that his hearers have been Christians for many years and are still babes when it comes to the things of God. No throw simply means this, to be slow moving in mind. Sluggish in understanding, full of hearing, stupidly, and he's very forgetful. It can be used to describe someone who has the perception, perceptive nature of a stone. It can be used to describe the numbed limbs of an animal which is ill. In other words, there's no foundation. He's just standing on himself. Oh, okay. Then let me say, let me, let me do this. <clears throat> Preach, I don't, okay. You're number one, you're number two, you're number three, you're number four. You're one, two, three, four. You're one, two, three, and four. Pastor, you're nothing. You're zero. Just stand behind here. <laughs> According to Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8, I want all the two, threes, and fours to stand up. See how many people we have. There's more people than number ones, right? Okay, I'll sit down. Number one, stand up. According to Mark, Matthew 13, Mark 4, and Luke 8, these are the only people who are going to be healed. The rest of y'all will not. Okay, go ahead and sit down. Because of the way you hear. Now, needless to say, everybody here could get healed in this. Okay. <laughs> But, but you see, that's the type, the, the, the two, threes, and fours are the type of uh, people that God says they're not going to be healed. Why? It's not that healing is not out there. They won't receive the healing as an inheritance. And if they do receive the healing and they do get healed, in a week later they're going to fall back into the same stuff. And, and their, their, their body is going to come back and, and, and go to its, its, its form of being sick, this, of sickness. Well, let me, let me say this. I do a lot of work in arthritis. We get a lot of people healed in arthritis. You know, you know why arthritis comes and why it stays with you and why it re will return as soon, after you get healed. Unforgiveness. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I've heard that. Bitterness. <laughs> Bitterness. Mm -hmm. I had a lady one time. She came up to the healing line, and the Holy Spirit spoke up and said, tell her, to forgive her husband. I said, okay, I hope it's you. <laughs> and I looked at it, and his, her daughter was next to her. And I said, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you to forgive your husband. And she said, well, I'm not mad at my husband. And I said, well, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit said for you to forgive your husband. 
And she looked at me and she said, my husband died. Like two or three years. I went, oh, Holy Spirit, what is this? You know, did I hear or didn't hear? You know, like that. And he said, tell her to forgive her husband. So I went back in there and I said, listen, I'm telling you. She started fussing at me. Um, he died like that. I said, and I looked at her and I said, you're mad and you're walking in unforgiveness because he died on you. She, she said, yes, yes. <laughs> and then she started crying. And then she instantly got healed because she forgave her husband. Now get this. About six or seven months later, I saw her daughter. And I said, how is your mama doing? She said, listen, she was doing great. Arthritis had totally gone away, everything like that. And then it came back on her. I said, what happened? She said, she went back to, to unforgiveness towards her husband. And it came back. Oh. Well, then get this. I did a study on agape. Now, what is agape? Okay, but what does it, what does it mean, Agape. It is God moving his character in you and through you to help other people. That's agape, right? Well, I did a Greek study on the, study on the word agape. <clears throat> and agape is compared to a tendon or a ligament in the body. Tendons attach each end of a muscle to a bone. Ligaments surround joints and bind them together to stabilize them. And it is also compared to connective tissue, which gives strength to joints, tendons, ligaments, and blood vessels. So when you bind agape, when you practice agape, because you have a father-son, father-daughter relationship, and you're taking on conform the conformity of your image to the image of Jesus, and you start walking in this love walk and agape, God is able to use you to help other people. It says this, you bind agape to yourself as presentive medicine and healing medicine. And love is the most powerful force on the earth. And then you get healed of skeletal diseases. Now, here's some of the diseases that in, in my ministry that have been healed in front of me. Lou Gehrig's disease. We had a guy that he was in the third stage of Lou Gehrig's disease where he had now lost his, well, he had already lost his speech. That's the first thing. But now he was, his body was starting to, to come up. We talk, I minister to him, stuff like that. I minister to, minister to him about unforgiveness and uh, whatever. He is now out preaching the word of God totally 100% healed because unforgiveness was in his mind. He was mad at God because of what happened. He thought God caused it. No. He's out, he's out preaching. Muscle atrophy, muscle muscular dystrophy, we have a fabulous results in that. Myasthenia gravis, which is a nerve disorder, spinal cord damage. ALS, neuropathy, cerebral palsy, of course, arthritis. Just by binding, how do you bind Agape. To your body. You practice agape. How do you practice agape? The father wakes you up one morning and says, listen, I want you to intercede for this particular person. That's agape flowing in you. And according to Proverbs, whenever you do that, whenever you're watering someone with the healing or whatever it is that God is doing, it says that it turns around and hits you right back in your face. You get the same healing they get. Okay. My spine, because the thing that's happened, my spine was like this. It jetted out like this and like this. Okay. I got a hold of the word, started binding agape to myself. Now my spine is just like this. Okay. Because it was causing a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Okay. I couldn't go on long marches like I had to do and so forth and put all the packs and stuff on it and it got to be it got to be a hassle. And then boom, now it's just like this because I bound agape to it. It was as simple as that. And I quit walking in unforgiveness. <laughs> I don't care if the person's been dead twenty five years. Unforgiveness is unforgiveness. Okay, now what is the opposite of love? Then let me ask you something. 
if hate is it. Let me see how I can put this. Love means to bring you closer into God. Hate doesn't mean to get away from God. That's a byproduct of the foundation, which is fear. You have love brings you close to God. Fear causes you to run away from God. Hate is just a byproduct of fear. Sin is a byproduct of fear. Now, let me prove this. We're having fun now, Doc. Okay, let's go. Okay. <clears throat> There's three types of fear in the Bible. Now, what I'm going to tell you, we have uh, once a year or so, I have a big conference for uh, bipolar people. We have fabulous results because I teach them what I'm fixing to teach you. Because their bipolar is based off of fear. Okay. First one is Phobos. Second one is Phob Phob Eto. Phob U S E Phob Eto. And the first one, first, last one is Dilea. Now, when you do a study on fear, the people who know Greek far better than I do says you can hardly tell the difference between Phobos and Phob Eto. And which is true, but this is what I did. I ran all the fear, and this is what came across. Phobos is simply this. You're speaking things into existence. I got a bad back. Senior citizen. Oh, I can't stand that. Senior citizen moment because you can't. Um, you know what happened to me yesterday? I went to Popeye's. I like their chicken. Greasy. The grease. The, it just, the grease flies, and you turn around, and you catch the grease in your mouth, and you just suck it up. I love uh, That's why I like it so much. I went over here, and this has never happened to me before, and I was dressed pretty decent. <clears throat> so the lady who was there, probably in her 50s or something like that, after I ordered, she said, would you like a, uh, uh, a drink? I said, well, no, ma'am, because usually I drink water. I said, no, ma'am, I don't want any. She said, okay. So she started doing stuff, and then she put a cup on top of the cash register. And I said, what's this? She said, this is for you. I said, why? I, I didn't want it. Why is it for me? She said, because we give all senior citizens free drinks. <laughs> that was not love. <laughs> and I, I looked. I said, well, thank you very much, man. I sure do appreciate it. And I got my lemonade, you know, and stuff like that. That's never happened to me before. So now I officially look like a senior citizen. A mature citizen? There you go. I used to have good looks, charm, and personality. The good looks left. I had charm and personality. So uh, that, that, that was something. That was something. Anyway, phobos is when you speak death. I'm always going to be broke. I did it I, I'm doing this because my dad was an alcoholic, stuff like that. You're always talking, 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 talking. Phobeto is when now the spiritual has become physical. Now you got it. You've got your senior citizen moments. You're losing your memory. You're doing this. You're in poverty. Okay? And the reason that you can hardly tell the difference when you're reading between these two right here is because they're one and the same. What you speak, it will happen. What has happened is a product of what you've been speaking. Because either your words carry love or they carry fear. They carry life or they carry death. Ponder, that is a principle that our Father has, has placed in it. Do I have moments of speaking death? Sure, sometimes I do. <laughs> if, 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 you, if you say, no, I never have that, then work retail and, see, and, and, and then see what happens, okay? But this is, this is the most interesting one, Dahlia. <clears throat> I get, we have a, a lot of people with stage three and four cancer that come to me, and we get them healed. And, and this is the reason, and, and, and I... This is the main reason why. And bi bipolar too get healed. Dialia sim simply means this. You have accepted death. And now you're not even getting into the word. Okay, so you have no hope. Now what is hope? Huh? Yeah, but what is hope? It's the expectation of a godly outcome. 
So they're not even expecting a godly outcome. So they've shoved everything aside. And I get a lot of the stage two, three, and four cancer patients like this. And if I can get them, stage four is, is, is hard because they're dilea. The fear has just infiltrated them to where they've just given up. Yeah. What do you do? With, you're only, and that's why I don't go to houses unless the patient calls me. Because I don't go because the family wants me to go. Because you go there and you sit in front of them. And I, this has definitely happened too. I go in and I sit in front of them because the family has called me and I go uh, and I go and finally I, I, in the spirit, I look at them and I, and I said, do you even want to live? And normally they'll say, no, I'm tired. I said, well, I tell you what, do you want to go home? They said, yes. If they're not born again, we'll get them born again. I said, yes, I just want to go home and see Aunt Sally and Uncle Fred and, this, and stuff like that. I want to go. And uh, I said, well, what's, what's keeping you here? She said, my kid, you know, a family out there. You know, most of them are just telling them to leave me alone. I said, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going we're to pray to God that he takes you real quick and real soon. How do you want to go? And most of them say in the sleep. I said, okay, he's going to take you in the sleep. And I said, when do you want to go? And they said, well, I need two or three days to say goodbye to everybody. I said, well, how many days? You tell me how many days. Well, give me four or five days, whatever they say. Okay, we'll come into agreement with that. And then they slip off peaceful they're in heaven and i'm going to meet them one day just having fun instead of but my mom was like that she was just suffering through a lot of stuff she said i'm being it's, it's time to go and i said okay so in two days she went it was over with and she's happy as can be okay we had her sister was aunt effie who chewed tobacco back then <laughs> when aunt, when aunt, when aunt effie came you know we had her her spit platoon she'd care she'd spit in there aunt effie she was a mule skinner. You know what that is? Okay, she drove, she drove mule trains, the mules. She was a mule skinner. Okay, because Aunt Effie was born in 1880, something like that. Everything. So, you know, she's up there. I guess if there's mules up there, there's, she, she's, she's, having, she's having a blast. So, no matter what you're believing in, money or whatever like this, you, if you get into this final stage, it is tough getting you out of that final stage because you have accepted death. And that's tough. Now, I've had so many people say this, what I need, and come up to prayer, I need more faith. Now, what would be, knowing what you know about love, what would be wrong with that statement? I need more faith to get through this or this, that, and the other. You don't need more faith. You've got the faith of Jesus. One of your inheritance is the faith of Jesus. So you have his faith. Yes, you need to mature in it. That's teleao. Right? Teleos and teleao. To mature in it. Teleos uh, tele is when you've, when you've made it. Well, we ain't all made it. Okay? We're constantly maturing. When you look in the, in the uh, New Testament, the word when it says be perfect and stuff like that, it's really teleao. Mat- be maturing and getting closer to God and, and, and so forth. And I, I look at him, and a lot of times they don't understand. I said, well, you don't need faith. You've got the faith of Jesus. What you need is more information on love. Because faith worketh or is energized or gets its juice from love, from agape. Well, as soon as you exercise your agape, you will be a long-distance runner in faith. Because how do you know that, how many of you know that if you're believing for something, and sometimes it takes a while, and what happens is you stop putting your trust out there, your faith out there, and then you don't get what you receive or, or what you want, right? It's because people are so concentrated on faith, 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 faith when they said, no, agape, Father, use me to help someone else. Okay? Isn't this good? Am I knocking you in the head too many times? Pastor said he had a bunch of rebates, rebates, uh, reprobates here. So not rebates, (laughs) reprobates. Uh, he did. Rebates. Rebates. Now get this. This is love talking. This is God talking. This is love talking. He said this, you hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye. You're a hypocrite. Another one. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast your pearl before swine. 
Another one, the children of the kingdom of, of uh, darkness shall be cast out into the outer darkness. He was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes right there, calling them, you're fixed to get cast out. And they, in the outer darkness, they thought they, you know, they, they thought their stuff didn't stink. And he was sitting, Jesus was talking to him, saying, you're going to hell, boy. And this is love now. Now, this is love talking. Yes. And whosoever shall not uh, receive you. Now, this, he told this to the disciples. And, and the disciples were going to the Jewish people. And he said, whoever don't receive you, and your words, depart out of them, out of the house, out of the city, and shake off the dust off your feet. Which is, in the tradition, is this ultimate contempt. This is love talking. Go. Oh, you're a generation of vipers. How can you, being evil, speak good things? You're hypocrites again. Why do you transgress the commandments of God and your tradition? Why tempt you, my, uh, why tempt you me, you hypocrite? Many are called, but few are chosen. And this means you. You ain't chosen. Uh, you're blind guides. You make your fellow children a part of hell. And you're blind. This is all agape love that Jesus was pronouncing from the Holy Spirit. Does that sound like love? And I said this one time before. Agape means this, not necessarily giving to you what you want, but what you need. Uh, there was a guy that we were in a group meeting, <clears throat> a small group meeting, and this guy started saying how he did some, uh, went into this lady's house to sell her some stuff, this, that, and the other, boom, boom, boom. And uh, the lady tried uh, undressing him and taking his clothes off. And by the Holy Spirit, I knew that is a lie. This is what you did. And I named off exactly what he did. Well, he rebelled. And this guy was a boxer. Okay? He rebelled. He was furious at me. And he hated me for a long time. Finally, he came to the associate pastor. He said, you know what Ben told me? He said, yeah. I said, that's exactly what happened. You see, he did, the Holy Spirit needed to tell him that he was lying and fess up to it, whatever, how, ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Okay? He was giving him what he needed, not what he wanted. Amen? Okay. Then let's talk about faith then. How many types of faith are there? Kinds. How many kinds of faith are there? Now, Dr. Annette. Yeah, you could, yeah. Yeah. Let me see which one I'm going to do first because it's almost time to quit. Let me see which Don't one I'm going to do first. Time. Okay. Well, I'll take a hamburger and a french fry. I, know. <laughs> I want some Greek food. <laughs> the goat cheese. I tried goat cheese. It was, it was great. It just surprised me. You got some at the house. I want to see how I'm going to do this. Uh, okay, let me do this first. Pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. There's pist, uh, a pistos. Pistu. E U O, and then finally there is uh, parapistos. When you're looking in your Bible, you have to know what kind of faith he's talking about here, because it's going to tell you what in the heck is going on. Okay, pistis, the top one, P I S T I S, is the number one faith that is in the Bible. It means absolute trust in God. The transferring of your total trust and belief over to him, which means over to the word, which means the word is final authority over my life, not what Aunt Sarah and Uncle Joe told me about. That's the number one. Now, in the Greek, when it says absolute, that means you've given it all. Either you're going to make it or you're not. That's, that's your mentality. Father, I'm going your way. Either I'm dead or I'm going to live. You make the choice, but I'm going your way. There's no turning around anymore, such as your tithes. <laughs> I'm giving what you told me to do. Okay, that takes a while to get there. It does. What it takes is the love walk, and then it will get you there. If you try to do it on your own, what happens, fear will come in, and fear does this. 
it'll make you it it make your five physical senses the authority over what's fixing to happen to you. Because you look in your checking account and you find out I don't have enough money to do daily squat after I pay my tithe, I don't have money to do anything. It makes your five it's, the five physical senses are called your lower nature. Can we turn the air on in here? Sure. These people are getting hot. Fear will make sure you make friends with your lower nature, which is your five physical senses. Okay, especially in the area of healing. Especially in that. So that's pistis. Pistos uh, simply means you believe in a doctrine. You believe in something. Now, it can be a godly doctrine. It can be a doctrine that's not godly. But you believe in it. Therefore, what do you do when you believe in something? You talk about it. You rehearse it. And if it's something that is not of God, then what you're doing is you're activating fear. Fabus and Fabia, oh, and sooner or later you're going to get it. Okay? Then you have pissed you, oh. That is God's judging your character. What is God and Jesus talking about in heaven about your character? That's when pistio is when God has faith in your character to go out and do something. And you'll handle it. Well, I think it hit all of us on this one. Okay? And I had to sit down one time and just say, Father, what do you think about me? And thank God he didn't answer me. Because <laughs> I didn't have to have him answer me. I knew exactly what was going on. Okay? And the last one is peripistis. This is the 30, 60, 100-fold principle. Peri comes from the word, peri comes from the, word the uh, periscope. In summary, okay, and you have three ships. What you do is you put your target on one, you destroy it, or you accomplish whatever the Holy Spirit has told you to do. If my foot hurts, the Holy Spirit has told me to wiggle my toe. Well, that's my 30-fold. I'm wiggling this toe until I can wiggle it, and everything is okay. Then he says, okay, we're going to graduate to something else. Now I want you to move your foot. And you don't concentrate on walking or anything. You concentrate on that. Then when you can move your foot, you come over to the hundredfold, which says, okay, now get up and walk. You get up and walk. That's parapistis, 30, 60, hundredfold. That's the type of faith there. Isn't that good? So it depends on what kind of, it depends on what kind of faith, you're, uh, faith you're in. Now, it says in 1 John, turn with me to 1 John chapter Oh, wrong one. First John chapter four. And we'll talk about this and we're gonna have to quit. I'm tired. I appreciate I'm tired of listening to me talk. <laughs> First John chapter one. We're gonna talk about forgiveness from our dad, from our Abba, our father. First John chapter one. That's in the New Testament, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, let me get my note. If I have my notes, let me get my notes because I want to explain a little bit more to this. <clears throat> I think I have it. Yeah, I do have it. Okay. Verse 6, it says, If we say that we have fellowship or holiness that dominates our lives with him, and walk or behave in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Okay? Now, you know what the word, you know what the word righteousness means? Okay. What's another thing? It's, it's, righteousness is simply the standards of God. Okay? But it's not, you are, dikahi asune. Une on there simply means it is a state of being. When you, got, when you became born again, now you are righteous. You're no longer an enemy to God. And he expects you to live up to the standards, his standards, which is forgiveness for one thing. But it's not enough just to be in the state of that. I mean, it's going to get you to heaven. But what you need is to dikahias. You need to practice righteousness. So he's saying here, if you don't practice the standards of God, then all you're doing is lying to him saying that you're close to God. Ooh. You mean I got to act like a Christian out there? 
Get this again. Get this. He says this. It'll get you to heaven, but unless you get outside and practice it and allow me to use you to help other people, he said, you're just lying to me. And you're lying to yourself. Now, this is love talking. Verse 7. But if our behavior is light. Now, your, your King uh, James is going to say something else. I just put this out in Greek. So we can go past it real fast. If our behavior is light or righteous, as his behavior is light or righteous, we have the practice of holiness one with another. We have, in other words, we have something common with one another. We have the holiness. We're separated. God is the boss. The world is not. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, the word cleanses there simply means this, and this is how God forgives. From the moment that you are thinking about sinning to the moment that you sin, and now you have the repercussions of sin, not only people get mad at you, but you have the guilt of sin. He does this. It's the complete forgiveness of sin. He takes from the time that you've thought about sin to the time that you have condemnation about the sin, conviction or condemnation about the sin. He takes that out of time, turns around, and throws it away and shuts the time as if you've never sinned. That's what forgiveness from God in the Greek actually means. It's called kehiros and kronos. He takes the time. There's two, there's two different types of time. He takes the, the, the time that you did it, thought about it, and repercussions about it. He takes it out, chunks it away, and then shuts the door as if you've never sinned anymore. So you don't have to bring it up because he's not going to bring it up. The only priest who's going to bring it up is your Aunt Mary and Uncle Sally. Hey, you know what you did back in 1905? Yeah. They're going to bring it up, okay? But to God, it's forgotten. If you want to bring it up, you bring it up. But to God, it is, for, uh, it is forgotten. Well, you've got to think about this. If he's forgotten about that, then he has to know that you have the propensity to sin. You know what I'm talking about? Because he's not a dumb man, okay? So get this. It's a fabulous little thing. <clears throat> when you sow a sin, you reap a habit. When you sow a habit, you reap a character. C-H-A-R-A-C-T-E-R. And when you sow a character, you reap a destiny. God can forget about your sin, but he knows your character. He's not dumb. Because I've had some people say, well, he, he, he's totally forgiven me about sin, therefore I can just go do what I want to do. No, 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 no. He knows your character. If you sow a sin, you're going to reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you're going to reap a character. If you sow the character, you're going to reap your destiny. Well, your destiny can either be death or your destiny can be life. You have to choose on this. If you say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, let's talk a little bit about sin. Can you give me 10 minutes? Okay. Shoot, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> what is the number one sin? What else? Lack of love. Okay, think of the sin that you're in and tell me. No, I'm again. Okay, okay. <laughs> the number one sin. What number one? What number one sin does God think about? That's the number one. He says that's the number one sin. Now this is all in love. Now it's called hamartia. Y'all remember hamartia? Yeah. Doc, you do? Okay. Oh, but he covered this in a lot of the other classes. You skipped out? This is an archery Greek, okay? And it simply means this. You have a target. Believe me that this is a target. You, here you are over here, and you have a bow. This is the righteousness of God. This is his standards, 
And he expects you to dikaios, to practice his standards. But his standards are a little bit too much for you. So you shoot your bow, and it falls here, and not to the target. So what you do is you shoot again, and it falls right here. Now, instead of walking in and get into agreement with him, what you do, these are all unrighteous acts. What you do is you put the target here. You see, there's a lot of work moving the target and only one step to get in the range of the target. So what you do is that all of a sudden you decide to put your standards high and not his standards. That's unrighteousness. That's the sin of pride. You're going your own way. And he said that's the number one sin. In fact, if you go in the, in, the, in the New Testament, that's the number one sin that is listed because off of that is every other sin. Not reaching what he expects from you. Not reaching your potential. Not reaching your destiny that he has given for you, that he wants for you. Everyone here that was born, God had a destiny for you. And you're not reaching the character in order to get that destiny. So what does God do out of love if he can't use you? He says, I love you, but I'm going to have to use her. Because I've got a plan. I've got things that have to happen. I've got the lady down the streets that need to be healed. She doesn't want to do it. We're going to use her. But he still loves you. You're still going to make it to heaven. But you're not walking in love. Abba. Father. If we confess our hamartia. Not living up to his standards. He is faithful and just to forgive us our hamartia and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not hamartia, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Everyone here has a problem with the sin of hamartia, not living up to his standards. And he knows that. He's a dad. My son, I love him. He's going in the service before too long. And I love him. But did he make mistakes? Yeah. But did I throw him out? No. I can't beat him anymore because he's that big. So <laughs> he's a big guy. He's, he's a big guy. Well, I can. Actually, I can still take him down. I, I can still. In fact, he, he, he jumped on my back two, two nights ago at 10 o'clock at night. I was ready to go to bed. I said, Ethan, leave me alone. Leave alone. And. He said, come on. He calls me old man, which is out of love. Old man, come on, old man, come on, come on. I said, okay, one hand. I took him down and I held him there. Because <laughs> I, I also teach. I get people ranked for their black belts, jujitsu. I also teach so I can do all that stuff. That's, that's why he tries me a lot. He's, he's much bigger than I am. He's a good kid. He is 17. He'll be in the service. Uh, he said, I wanted to go in the service. And I understood because I wanted to go in the service myself. And uh, so he said, uh, I wanted him to go in the Marines. And uh, he went over there and did all this stuff. They wanted to make him an officer and stuff like that. And he worked out PT and all of this stuff. And then he, after a while, after six months, seven, eight months working out with him, he came to me and said, Dad, I just don't want to be a Marine. I said, what are you talking about? See, my personality is kick the door in and get the bad guys. That's my personality. Okay. And that's what I did. I went and got bad guys, and I, and I went and uh, got the good guys from the bad guys. That's all I've done a lot of my life. And so that's my mentality. And, but he wants to go in the CBs. He loves construction. Well, I never thought about construction. And so finally, because he has to make his own decision, but finally it came to me. He was sitting on the side of me. This is part of Abba, our father. I started understanding his heart, and I said, Ethan, now I get it. Because I want you in the Marines. Now I get it. My personality is to go in and get the bad people, kick the door in and have fun. Your personality is to build the door to where I can't get in. You see, the juice, my juice was getting the bad people. His juice is building the wall that you can't penetrate. And he said, it's exactly right. And it hit me. I said, okay. See, that's Abba, our father. He knows who you are, what he wants you to be. And he's interested when you go shopping to get the best deals or whatever. He's interested in every little detail. Every little detail. And he will protect you. I was in a firefight. A guy was from me to the net. Unloaded his weapon. 
didn't hit me. After everything was over with, we went back in the wall. Behind, there was a wall behind us, and we saw where he sprayed his bullets, and they were all up here. Now, a six-year-old child can sit there and hit someone. In order to hit all the spots, he would have had to point his weapon up and hit all the spots. No, it was here. It was coming straight to me. The only thing I can think is this, because God loves me. The angels were just batting the, <laughs> the bullets away. That is the only thing that I can think of. There was another time I was underwater, and I ran out of oxygen, which you're not supposed to do, because you're always looking at your watch and your tank and stuff like that, and I couldn't get up, and so I just took it out, and I went, <sighs> and I breathed in air. I mean, because I thought, okay, I'm, I thought it, the process was I'm going to breathe in water until it turns and dies. Okay, go over I breathed in air. Our dad is interested in every little bitty thing that you do because he is love. But he expects love back from you. And then he's going to protect you supernaturally. All this mess that's going on in the world, he'll protect you supernaturally. I'm not saying you're not going to go through bad times, but he'll tell you how to get through the bad times because it'll build patience, steadiness, hupomene. One thing about patience, hupomene, is that you'll go through this. It might be hard, but you'll go through it, and then you'll realize, ain't nothing going to rock me anymore. If I've got to go through it again, I'm going to go through it. And agape is simply this. Because you've gone through this, Ben, now I can you team you up with this particular person that's going through the same thing. And you'll be able to help them. That's love. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. Well, I didn't get to my message, but that's okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's okay. That's okay. Any questions about anything? 